I'm Oliver Trevina in studio for The Hollywood Reporter, joined by the brilliant Alessandro Nivola. How are you, sir? Thanks for that. It's, it's true that I was genuinely excited about this. I mean, you're one of those actors that you hear the name and you're like, yes, when's he coming in? When's he coming in? We can hug. We can hug, but I might not let go. Um, it's true. You just, it's, I don't know what the secret is. I guess no one knows what the secret is, but you've just continued, 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 continued. Great choices, great projects, great roles. And I guess that's the, the key to it, right? To continue. Well, to continue, continue, it definitely helps. Continue. But how do you do that? <laughs> Answer the question that every actor wants to know. Um, I've, I've always been drawn to roles that were really different from myself. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. And maybe it happened by accident when I was younger and I was just starting out. And one of the first things that I got sort of uh, a lot of attention for was the role that I played in Face Off mm -hmm. and it was such a kind of like odd little character that it kind of you know opened up a world of like possibility for me because people who were casting movies sort of thought like well if he could play that then maybe he could play this right, it's right. also like totally different in another different way and they saw beyond the and, image uh, a bit more yeah right. so I just wasn't ever you know from the beginning I wasn't really confined to playing sort of young guys like mm -hmm. me I was like doing all kinds of weird um, right. tweaked little people and so uh, yeah that just like made for variety right. I guess right which is a perfect segue into disobedience because that that isn't yeah. that's not you right I mean it's a it's a big change there was a lot that went into yeah that. yeah that was I mean this was maybe the most that I've had to research right. anything that I've ever done um, which was like a great challenge. Right. I mean, it was a right. gift. Right. Um, I, I, you're always looking for that, like something that you can really spend months. And, and also, I, I, I was offered the job, uh, you know, longer in advance than you no than I normally get offered mm -hmm. work. Okay. You know? Which would help for a role like this. Yeah. You'd like I to mean, think, like yeah. I, you know, I needed time to learn to speak Hebrew. Hebrew right, an, an um, Orthodox Jew. <laughs> for anyone that doesn't know what we're talking about, yeah, so this is yeah, what, do we, yeah. I need to explain yeah. what the yeah. hell is going this is on. What, here, this, uh, well, now you can understand the work that went into into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I was playing a, a Hasidic or an English Orthodox Jewish rabbi. Right, right. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I look. My grandmother was German Jewish, right. um, but she wasn't very religious. In fact, she. During the in the 1930s, had moved to Milan to escape Hitler, but then went to art school there, and she was kind of like a wild bohemian right. artist, and met this like Catholic Italian guy there, right. and married him, and so like it was. So it's safe uh, to say you started from the scratch on this. You yeah, it didn't scratch. really right. help. Uh, right, right, you know. <laughs> right. You couldn't pull anything from that experience. She definitely wasn't, um, you know, saying the right uh, Hebrew blessings over our meals at dinner, but. Right. Um, I, I was lucky enough to meet this woman whose kids uh, went to my go to my kids' school in Brooklyn, okay. and she had been, uh, you know, the daughter of a Hasidic rabbi and had left the Orthodoxy herself because she fell in love with this Asian guy and got pregnant out of wedlock and wow. was like, "I'm done with it," and um, you know, has been living as a totally modern woman. And, right, right. And she, but she still had all these siblings that uh, were in the Lubavitch Hasidic right. community in, in Crown Heights in Brooklyn, right. which is not far from where I live. And so she came and introduced me to all of them, and I started hanging around with all of her family. Right. And they kind of were determined that I get this right. And well, they were yeah. really worried that I was going to get it wrong. Because it's really, I mean, it's a prominent part of the movie, and, and I think you yeah. mentioned Brooklyn, that's where all of us live. There's these little pockets. Yeah. That, you know, you kind of don't know a much, know much unless you're in it. Yeah, I guess. if you walk yeah. down the street, if I would walk down the street normally, like they wouldn't look twice at me, right. and and right. so I, uh, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to kind of really get mm -hmm. inside at all if it hadn't been for this wo woman and for these these people who kind of welcomed me in. It. But pretty soon I was like. You know, this guy was teaching me all these Hebrew blessings that I had to say and was inviting me to their Shabbos dinners. Right. And I really, like, had a, a close encounter um, in a thrilling way. Right. So it took a, a, a big commitment, and I was nervous uh, about representing them mm -hmm. accurately. And I felt the burden of responsibility as well because my character kind of represents the, the religion and... Um, 
uh, you know, that particular way of life mm -hmm. in the film. Right. And, and if I uh, if I didn't do it in a way that was faithful to the reality that, um, it, you know, it could be disrespectful right. or, or also it would just hurt the film. So. Right. It's a big order. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big order. Yeah. The cast, obviously, Rachel Weiss, Rachel McAdams, and, you know, this uh, story of, uh, you know, the forbidden love, I guess. Yeah. And it, it touches on a lot in the movie in the way that, you know, it shows you you can take your own path in life. I feel like there's a lot of messages in there, mm -hmm. which is why it's mm -hmm. incredible. Mm -hmm. um, the chemistry you guys have is amazing. Did you guys meet before the movie to prep much? Because obviously you, you mentioned you knew about the project a while before. Did they? Did you all get together? Was there much rehearsal? Well, they... It, well, so... All right, so Rachel Weiss is a producer right. on the project. Right, she right, of course. She found right. the book and brought the book to uh, one of the other producers, Frida Torres Blanco, who um, you know ended up developing with her. So she'd been involved from the inception. Rachel Weiss and I had done another movie right. together about twenty years ago, uh, which was uh, this little Michael Winterbottom movie called "I Want You" that that uh, nobody saw, but that brought me over to England for the first time. Oh wow! It was like my second film role right after Face Off and um, Got ya. and I hadn't really intended to <clears throat> have so much of my career play out in the UK which it ended up doing as a result of that film and uh, so I knew her really well and you know we'd seen each other over the years and so that was uh, Rachel Weiss and then McAdams uh, I didn't know at all but mm -hmm. she and I were in the same boat in terms of like having to well yeah there was really a lot to do as well do yeah. this research and we were both shit scared and and uh, am I allowed to say that you, you said uh, it <laughs> <laughs> so you had that in common Oops. and so yeah we were kind of we met fairly early on I think we had like a kind of little rehearsal where we read through the script in New York before we even went over to the UK at all right. and um, so she and I were in touch uh, via email and also the accent that we were using is a very particular accent mm -hmm. it's it's a London accent it's a North London accent but that has like a little bit of a kind of Yiddish inflection right, in the right, way right. that you know, there, there's a New York version of it where right. in Brooklyn you hear like a Brooklyn accent, but there's like this kind of you know, like the T's and the D's, like they, they, it's a little bit, you know, they right. kind of hang on the hang on their D's and their G's, and and so that uh, sound is there is like a London equivalent of that that I really wanted to try and get, and I was hearing it when I was there, and I was recording people into my iPhone a lot, and sort of trying to you know, hear what that felt like and what that sounded like. and So and good, so, by the way. I'm like, even just listening now, I'm uh, kind of, I'm, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm amazed, I'm amazed. I'm like, I struggle to speak British. <laughs> and then there's you just popping in and out of everything. It's amazing. Oh, uh, well, I love doing, I mean, I've always loved, like my voice has always been a big, you know, part of character and performance and it's often been a kind of starting off point mm -hmm. for me, even if it's not an accent, just like the sort of sound of, of my voice in, in whatever character it might be. And um, so I, I tend to fixate on that as like one of the very first things. And, and so she was too, and we had to sound like we were from the same place mm -hmm. and that we'd been married for 15 years or whatever. And so we spent some time together working on that as well. It's and nice to get a bit of prep yeah. time for that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, all these things, look, the more time you have mm -hmm. to prep for something, it's always better, you know? I used to think like, oh, it takes away the spontaneity or whatever. And right. I think that's a total BS. Like, you know, even in the theater, I, you know, I used to not memorize my lines until sort of shortly before we were up in front of an audience because mm -hmm. I thought like through the rehearsal process that if I knew my lines I would have a kind of rote way of saying them and that that would take away from the kind of discovery right, of the right. rehearsal process and and then this last time I was on Broadway I, I was doing The Elephant Man with uh, right. Bradley right. Cooper and and we had done it before, a year before, at Williamstown as a sort of trial run over the summer. And as a result, like, the lines came back to me really, really quickly. And so by the time we were in rehearsal, I knew them already. And it was the most liberating experience right. of my life. And it just goes to show, Especially like, for Broadway, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in yeah. any kind of process, <laughs> like, the more sort of time you have, the more you live with it, the more, like, it really kind of can settle in and become part of you. Know. 
Amazing. Well, clearly, you're, you're, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Um, Should we hug again? No, we, we can hug again. So, by the way, we can make this the interview of hugging. I just don't think other people will appreciate what we're going through. Um, so I mentioned like Rachel Weiss and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and De Niro and all these people, mm. McAdams, that we just spoke about that you've worked mm. with. Anyone on a call sheet that hasn't been on there yet that springs to mind? I mean, I'm sure there's many, but the first one that you'd like to work with. Oh, that I haven't worked yeah, with Yeah, because you go through your oh, resume and it's oh, literally right. like oh, well, IMDb's God. top 500 of all time. So, Well, there's some, I don't know if he's acting anymore. Like, I always wanted to work with Gene Hackman. Oh. I, had an, I, I met David Mamet uh, uh-huh. for this movie that Gene Hackman was going to star in. It's a star opposite him. I can't remember what it was called. But I remember sitting down in this meeting with, with David Mamet and the first thing Mamet said was, so... Can you go toe to toe with Hackman? And I was like, <laughs> "It's a big question." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just say yes, even if you don't believe it. That's when you just say yes. Um, so I always wanted to go toe to toe with Hackman, but um, who knows? I wasn't given the opportunity that time. Um, okay. Who else? Um, they're all retiring. Daniel Day Lewis, he's retired. Um, Let's get him out of retirement. We want to see this. We want to see this. We're going to end with uh, THR's top five. Five yeah. easy questions. Okay. I hope they are sound easy. Hard Otherwise, already. I'm not going to get that hug at the end. Um, hard. TV show you watched as a kid that you wish you were in? Oh, uh, Knight Rider? Yes. Right? Kit? Drive yeah. the car too? Yeah. Kit. Maybe that Bugatti that you just saw had Kit in it. <laughs> I don't think so. One of our jokes. Kit would never be that big class A. <laughs> um, one actor who inspired you growing up? Uh, okay, I guess I'll say Dustin Hoffman. That's a good one. Um, I saw him in a movie of Death of a Salesman, and I, for some reason, really loved it. There you um, go. There he you called go. me up after he saw Laurel Canyon. That was the only time I've ever had any communication with him. But what an amazing yeah. full circle that is. Yeah. yeah, look at that. Last show you binge-watched, if you do binge-watch. Well, it was a mini-series, Howard's End. It, it's just been on Hayley Atwell stars in it. Okay. I'm going to do a, a thing in, in the UK now uh, called Foreign Skies that's produced by the same guy, Colin Callender, and it's going to be shot by the same guy who is this great Polish. Why are all great DPs Polish? I don't know. All cinema, all great They have a great DP school in Poland. They do. The po- Polish School of DP. They do, yeah. Is that what it is? In fact, the guy who know. shot the movie I did with Rachel Weiss before was Polish. His name was Slavomir Itziak. See, I, I wouldn't even try that. Shot, like, his <laughs> I'll just call him Slav. I'd be like, Slav Slav, did it. Yeah. Hey, Slav did it. Oi, Slav did oi, it. Oi, 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 Slav. He's got me down now as well. Um, <laughs> one word to describe your journey as an actor. My, you know, like a Jackson Pollock painting or something? Oh, one word. One no, word. One word. By the way, that was a better, better answer. I just, splatter, splatter. I, I, I don't think I could have asked most people one painting to, to describe your I just mean there's career. no continuity to it whatsoever. Amazing. Okay. Just hurl paint at the that wall. Works, that works. That works. Um, and last question. Just anything random that pops up. One thing we might not know about you. Oh, um... I've got orthotics inside my boots. I do too. Do you? Yeah, I've got them done at the chiropractor. We hug now. We hug now. We hug now. <laughs> Brilliant. That's enough. Enough of the hugging. Or may not. May not. Maybe it might continue. But we're cutting this. <laughs>